what we've got here are two Arduino Nanos, one here, one here, on a breadboard, and they're doing something kind of special. They're sharing data between these two wires. These two wires are using a protocol called I squared C, and just like anything, it is possible for you to run into difficulties when you try and implement a system like this. So I wanna talk a little bit about how I set up this really basic example and also I wanted to use an oscilloscope to um, poke around and see what's actually happening between these two lines. The first thing I want to note is that I'm connected to A4 and A5 on both of these. The A4 on this pin, or on this Arduino is connected to the A4 on this Arduino, and the A5 on this one is connected to the A5 on this one. And you can see I only got USB coming to this guy, um, but the power is actually being shared through this bus here. The thing I want to point out is that we're using A4 and A5, which if you have a basic familiarity with Arduino, you know that those pins are for analog inputs. And that's not what we're doing here. We're doing serial. Um, well, specifically we're doing I squared C, or Arduino will call it wire. Um, and that shows that the at Mega328, the microcontroller at the heart of the Arduino Nano, um, it has pins that are usable for several different things. It depends on how they're configured, that's how they'll be used. And so different pins have different functions available to them. So the pins that we're connected to right now could be used for analog, but they could also be used for I squared C communication. So um, the first thing we need to do is we need to set up our oscilloscope. And so I've got um, some probes here, and one of these lines is data, one of them is clock. What's what? I can't remember, but we'll be able to figure that out in a couple seconds. So I'm gonna first fix my ground to the same ground as the rest of my system. And then I'm just going to plug this guy in for A4. And I also have my other probe here for the clock. Now here's the thing with this guy. Um, I've got this ground connection and something to note with the majority of oscilloscopes um, is that this ground on this probe is connected to this ground on this probe at the oscilloscope. And so this isn't even really necessary. I can take this out just to make my wiring a little bit cleaner. It's not really a big concern for this little example that I'm doing here, um, but if you're working with power stuff, you want to be careful because um, if you're trying to assume that you can have two different grounds, that's not going to work and you're probably going to um, potentially pop a fuse or break your circuit. So I've got my connections made and now let's head over to the oscilloscope. And I've got a little white screen here. We're going to um, use that as a notepad in a second. Um, but first I want to point out our oscilloscope, it's just sending out some garbage. Um, it's really not discernible. One of my first steps every time I'm using an oscilloscope, if it has a feature, is I'm going to click this default setup button. And that's nice because who knows what someone was using the oscilloscope beforehand or if they knew what they were doing and um, your settings can be all out of whack. And so if you have a default setup button, that's nice to get you to a nice consistent starting point. And check it out. Um, I've got a decent sign here that there's some sort of life happening because I can see these little pulses there. They're really, really fast, um, and they'll come and go and come and go, um, but I know that there's some sort of life. And so this can be handy if you have an analog oscilloscope. That might be enough to say, oh, well, at least I know that I'm sending data as a debug precaution or debug step. Um, but I want to see more. I want to actually interpret this and see if I'm sending what I want to send. If you have a nice oscilloscope, um, you might have a button like this, a serial button, that you can use to easily decode things like I squared C, um, but oftentimes they're behind some sort of paywall like this one, it's um, blocked. So we're not gonna do that, we're gonna do that kind of a different way. So here's what I wanna do. I want to, first, I know I squared C is at, it is normally a, uh, it is normally high, right? It's normally high. And so um, I can see where it's going. It's my ground's here, and I'm at some sort of higher voltage here. It's five volts. 
my trigger is at zero, and so I know at some point I'm gonna have to have my trigger somewhere in that zone, um, right, somewhere just in between so I can catch an edge, um, a falling or rising edge. The next thing is I, I just can't see these signals. And unlike an analog signal that's, you know, typically nice and repetitive, well, not all analog signals, but things like, um, you know, AC out of the wall, or even uh, plucking a string on a guitar, you would see a nice consistent signal that you could use your trigger to see um, as it changes. But you can't really do that with digital because it's pulsing, it's not a consistent signal, it's on off, on off. Um, so what you normally wanna use is, well, I'll, I'll do it this way. I'm gonna stop, stop the oscilloscope, and then I'm gonna hit this single button. And the single button is gonna wait for the voltage to cross my trigger point and then it's gonna start recording. And there we go, check it out. I've captured some signal, right? What the signal is, well, I'm not quite sure yet. Well, I know, but we'll, we'll get to that. Um, so I can see lows and highs, lows and highs, which is very cool. Um, let's see what's past this point. I, I actually can't see what's past this point because when I do this single capture, I'm only capturing one frame, right? Only one frame. If I wanna capture more, it's actually reasonably easy. I can just change my horizontal axis. I'm changing my horizontal axis and I'm just going to capture another single. I press my single button and there we go. I can see the whole packet there. And if I want, I can zoom in Something to notice here, right, right off the bat, is uh, when we think of digital stuff, we think about these nice square waves, but we don't quite have that here. We got this like rounded edge, um, and that's okay. Well, that I know it's okay, but you might need to look into this and see if this roundness is too much of a problem for your system. Um, but the next question is, is this the data or the clock? Well, um, I my hunch is that this is data because it's actually kind of inconsistent. Typically a clock signal is going to be more consistent on, off, on, off at an even pace. But here we see it's on, off, on, off, off, on, on. Um, and that's not what we'd expect to see for clocks. I'm pretty sure this is my data. The other problem that we have is I didn't have my channel two turned on. So let's turn on that channel two. I'm gonna zoom back out. Because if I turn my channel two on right now, I don't see anything. It did, wasn't turned on, so it didn't get captured. So let's capture one more time. Oops, let me stop it. I do capture, and there we go. I'm gonna take my clock and move it kind of out of the way, and I'll zoom in just a smidge. Now, let's change our time axis. And yes, that definitely, definitely looks like a clock here. Nice, consistent. With I squared C, we expect to see something called a start condition. And what that start condition is, is a transition from high to low while our clock or our green signal is high. And so that's our start condition. And then we start seeing our clock, right? One, 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 that's our clock. How many bits do we see here? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and there's a little waiting spot. Let's talk about that real quick. We see nine bits, which we're used to the idea of seeing, you know, eight bit segments, but we see nine. It turns out that this ninth bit is um, a thing that is used in I squared C called the acknowledge bit, where um, the receiver, the thing that received this data, it has the ability, or I should say the obligation, on the ninth bit to pull the bus low. Because remember, the controller and the peripheral are controlling this data, um, this data line, this yellow bus. Um, and so uh, this ninth bit, our acknowledge, we see it low, which indicates that the receiver really is getting the data and it's doing what it's supposed to. If you see this as a one, that might indicate that your receiver um, is not properly 
configured or it's not properly receiving that data or it's not able to interpret it. But here we see exactly what we'd expect. And if I, um, if I move forward to this next little packet here, I see the same thing, a zero there, a zero there. It's consistent. Very cool. Another thing, um, I, I showed this demo in class and um, a student had pointed out that that clock isn't consistent quite. There's this little downtime there. And that's okay. That's okay to a certain extent. This little downtime um, is, it could be attributed to a couple things. Um, what it likely is, is your processor that's sending the data just needs time to figure out what the next piece of data it is that it's sending, or there's some other execution happening within the code. Um, and it's okay. That is okay up to a certain extent. There are some devices where if it sees um, the clock held low for too long, it thinks that there might be some sort of timeout or some sort of disconnection. Um, but that is an okay thing. So now let's start dissecting this signal. Because that's another useful skill to have is to be able to look at this signal, figure out what it is, um, and then you can map that back to your code and see if it is actually what you expected it to be. So let's do something here. Um, we have, on I squared C, we're looking at our data when the clock is high, right? That's when we're looking at our data and we're changing it when the clock goes lower. It actually looks like on the falling edges when we're changing our data. So, Here's what I see. I see 0, 0, 0, 1. So let's write that down. Um, oops, let's bring my screen back here. 0, 0, 0, 1. And then what else do I have here? So I have a, after my 1, I have a 0, 0, 0, 1. Excellent. And remember this last bit is an acknowledge. I'll just put a little A there. So what is this? What, what do we actually have? Well, um, let me see if I can point there. Uh, what we're looking at here, um, the first seven bits of this whole byte, the first seven bits, um, that is our address or the device we want to talk to. So that first seven bits, that's 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, or I might have said one, too many zeros. This is 8. We're talking to device number 8. That last bit there is the read, write, not bit. And so this means that we're reading data since it's a 1. So there we go. Um, that's a useful thing. Um, we already know that, you know, given this data um, in this first little segment, that we're trying to talk to device eight and we're doing a request. And so you should look in your code if you're seeing some sort of issues and um, if you actually are requesting, then you should see um, this bit right here as a one, right? Um, and if you're trying to write, then you should see it as a zero. Um, and then also make sure that you have the right address there. Now, um, what we should see next, well, let's, piece it together here. So next little packet. I can zoom in just a smidge. Perfect. So our next packet we have here, we've got a, um, it, another thing to note real quick is this clock pulse is a little shorter than the others, um, but it turns out that that's okay. But it's, that's a potential area for concern there. Not to say that I have much control over that because the I squared C uses a peripheral on the microcontroller and so I don't have a bunch of control over that specifically, but it, it is um, definitely a thing that I noticed there. So what do we have? We have zero, one, one, zero. So let's write that down. Zero, one, one, zero. And then what do we have after that? We've got one, zero, zero, zero. One, zero, zero, zero. And then finally, we've got our acknowledge, which is a zero. Well, what is this, right? This byte right here, what is that? I have to have some context, right? If I'm, 
if I'm hacking and I have no context, then um, that's a kind of a different ball game. But typically, especially if you're engineering a system, you should have some idea of what this might be. And it turns out that that's ASCII data, right? So what I would do is do a um, binary to hex conversion. So this number here, we've got 0110. That's our first digit of our hex number. So we've got six, and then we've got 1000, which is eight, 68. If I look at an ASCII table, I'm gonna see that's lowercase h. And so I can follow this process through through the rest of this. I can keep following it through, following it through, um, and debug my signal. It's a really, really useful thing to do. Um, turns out that this is the packet, or the packet is ASCII for hello in a space. Um, so it's a really, really useful thing to do. And how did I do it? Well, let me just show you one quick little thing here. All right, so there's our data that we received. I did no coding for this example. All I did was went into Arduino and I went to file examples, oops, file examples. And then right down here is wire and I've got um, examples for setting up a master reader, a master writer, a slave receiver, and a slave sender. Got those two scripts up right now. Let's look at the master first. The master, um, I begin my I2C communication. I also begin my serial communication so I can send data to the computer. I'm making a request from device number eight, right? That's the address is eight. And that's what we saw, right? That's what we saw in our packet. I'm requesting six bytes. This six bytes doesn't actually get transmitted that we saw um, in terms of a request for six bytes. All we did was said, hey, device eight, we want to read from you. The six bytes is more getting the peripheral ready to receive those six bytes. And then um, next, right, I made my request and now I'm waiting while it's available. I want to read each character as it comes in and I want to print it off. Now let's look at what the, uh, what the slave sender is doing. So the slave sender, it joins the bus with an address of eight. Then it sets up this kind of interrupt here. Whenever the I squared C peripheral has a request of it, it's gonna call this function. And so you can see in its loop, it's not really doing anything, right? It's just delaying and doing nothing. Whenever something is requested of it, it's going to send H-E-L-O, L-L-O in a space. And so I do have my um, USB connected to the, uh, to the master, and there we can see it. Its data is being received and it's being sent from the slave. So I hope this is useful. Um, it's just a quick demo to show you um, using an oscilloscope to debug these signals can be super duper useful.